above the number one. So that's why we're doing this number bond activity, okay? And it says that we're supposed to do it out loud, but I'm just going to, let's just write it, okay? So if I want to make one whole here, what do I need to add to my one half? One half. One half, one half okay? So that's what we're doing in this section. Now, do you know the little trick? There's a little trick to this when we're trying to make one hole. Does anybody know it? Marlene. It's just like 5 plus 4, you add one to make 5. Okay, well, you add one more to make 5. Okay, what's your strategy, Bentley? You can uh, subtract 4 minus 5, or well, 5 minus 4. 5 minus 4. You'll get 1 fifth. Okay, so 5 minus 4 gives me my numerator. And my denominator does not change. That's correct. Okay? So 7 minus 1, what's that? And the denominator does not change. Okay? Do these last three, and then we'll check them. Some of you are already done, I see. Okay, I'm going to pull some sticks here. Um... Mika, what should I write here? Nine. How many nights? We'll make one whole. Four nights plus what? Five. Five. Good. So you can subtract, or if it's easier, just add. Okay? Um, Janae, what about the next one? Two. Good. And Kinley. Three, 150. You got it. So did you just do, yeah, you say 150. Yes. So that's, that's right. So let's look at the next one. Is this different? Oh, what is this? Okay, so we're going up to two this time, but don't let that fool you because they gave you the one. So you still only have to figure out what fraction will make one whole. Okay, so one half plus what makes one whole? Mm -hmm. One half. One third plus what makes one whole? Okay, so finish this. I'm going to pause it and then I'll pull sticks. All right, let's see. Bentley, what should I put on this one? Oh, uh, six. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. One third. Okay, good. You go ahead. As a depth, what should I put on this one? Uh, yes, you got it. Okay, and Ignacia. Uh, Good. Okay, how's the next one different? Because obviously Bentley's already started on that one. I have it. Oh, no, you have it. Okay. So this is a little different, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So we're going from an improper fraction to a mixed number. Okay. Now, a lot of times, we'll take out two halves here, and then we'll just have one half left. Okay? So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, which is the way we're going to, is to actually write the mixed number. Okay? So we're going to go from improper to a mixed number, and when the numbers get further apart, we're going to do some skip counting and some long division. Okay? So if I take out one whole here, what would that be? Two halves. So could I take out two holes? Yeah. How many would that be? Is everybody, is anybody with me? Okay, let me rewrite this. Okay? Don't do this, but I... Looking back on it, I kind of wish I would have started out like this. Only I would have had them equal. But I would take out two halves, and then take out two halves. So many halves is that? Two. Oh, four. Four halves, and then I'll just have another half left. So how many holes is this? Two. Two. Now, I'm going to remind you a couple other ways to do it, okay? So let's do the long division method here. Okay, so for seven halves, I just want you to write seven divided by two. In my head, this is what I think. Seven divided by two. So two times what? Three. 
And that gives me what? Six. Seven minus six is? You remember how I can take my remainder, put it on top of the divisor, and make a fraction out of it? So that's another way to do it, okay? Or you could take out two halves, two halves, two halves. So on 11 halves, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Is 12 too big? So how many holes? Five. So that's a skip counting way. Use your fingers and skip count. And then how many more to get to 11? Okay, you know what you're doing? Okay, try the rest of these. I'm going to pause it and then I'll pull sticks. All right, so how about Lily? What'd you get for this one, Lily? Um, one and one third. Good. Um, Kira? One and two thirds. And you're just checking as we go. Keisler, what about this one? Um, three and four. Okay. And Marlene? Okay, Estrella. Now, if I take out one hole, that would be four fourths, right? Okay. So how many more are left? Four fourths. Whoops, that four didn't work out. Okay. Not here. Aiden, what'd you get for this one? Four and three fourths. Good. Catherine. I got two and three fourths. And slave. I got nine and one fourth. Not one fourth. What's third? Thirty-nine minus thirty-six. Oh, um, Good. Now, how did I get thirty-six? That's my question. Estrella, how did I get thirty-six? Why did I say 30? Why did I tell him to subtract 39 minus 36? Because 4 times 9 is what? 36. 36. Okay? Let's keep going. What's this next one? Oh, it's a problem. Okay. So this is going to remind us how we've been doing this with common denominators and mixed numbers and improper fractions. Okay? All right. So the Napoli family combined two bags of dry cat food in a plastic container. One bag had five, six kilograms of cat food. The other bag had three, four kilograms. What was the total weight of the container after the bags were combined? Okay, so first of all, am I adding or subtracting? Adding. adding. So let's write the problem down. Five, six plus three fourths. And remember, we're setting it up with three equal signs. And it's been a while. Okay, I once you get that done, put your pencil down. I'm going to pull a stick, and I want you to tell me what you think the best denominator is here. Catherine. Um, 24. I was hoping she would say that. Now I'm going to tell you something. You've got a choice to make. If you choose 24 for your denominator, you're going to have to simplify. So it's your choice. You want to simplify before or after you do this thing. It's your choice. There's no right or wrong answer here. But I'm going to, I'm going to do the multiples of 6 and the multiples of 4. Remember, that's called least common multiple. Sometimes we call it least common denominator. But I'm going I'm to write the multiples and see if I can find one smaller than 24 and so it's your choice. You can write 24 or what's another option, Catherine? 12. 12. So you decide, boys and girls, but finish this problem. Now remember, if you pick 12, 
then you can't just do the switcheroo. You can't multiply by 4 here, can you? you got to stop and think 6 times what equals 12. So, Bentley, what would go there? 2. Okay. And 4 times what equals 12? Okay. <clears throat> so raise your hand if you used 24 okay and it's there's no right or wrong answer here i just want to know what you ended up with did you end up with an improper fraction ignacio yes. what was your improper fraction uh, 38 24 38 okay and minus 19 twelfths. So for me, it's easier to think about how many times will 12 go into 19? Okay. And how many are left over? What's 19 minus 12? So for this one, I get 1 and 7 twelfths. Okay. This one, I can do the same way. So 24... 24ths, and then what's 38 minus 24? Did you do that yet, Ignacio? Yeah, what did you get? 14 24ths. So my answer is 1 and 14 24ths, but now I've got to divide these two numbers by something. So what? what how would I get to 7 twelfths here? What would I divide by, Ignacio? Two. Oh, 2. Okay. So this answer is still going to be 1 and 7 twelfths. It just took us a little longer to get there. So you can do your work at the beginning, or you can do your work at the end. It's your choice. Okay? Everybody remember this? We did it quite a bit before. Okay. So let's look at the lesson for today. And this is where I need you to maybe put your pencils down and stop drawing and probably pay careful attention to what I'm about to say. Okay? So try and find problem one and then put your pencil down. Try to solve it? No. But I want you to tell me what, what's going to be difficult about this. There's a one. Okay, true. But I mean, I can subtract from one. Can't you? Yeah, so we're, we're going to have to find a common denominator, but that's not difficult for us anymore, is it? What will the common denominator be? Six. We're subtracting. That might have something to do why, with why it's going to be a little difficult. Catherine? We have to take one, put it into the last one. Why are you saying that? You're right. Because you can't subtract one half from one fifth. You can't. So, can I go back to the pizza? Put your pencils down, okay? So, if I've got... One whole pizza, and then one third of a pizza. Okay, so I've got this whole thing and this, and I'm trying to subtract a half of a pizza. I can't do one third minus one half and just leave the one out there by itself, can I? One half is too much. We're going to end up on the negative side of zero. So we can't do that. So Catherine is saying we've got to combine this one whole with the one-third. So instead of a mixed number here, I'm going to change it to an improper fraction, and that, that will make life easy for us. Okay? Now, Bentley says it's four-thirds. You guys agree? Because this is one, two, three, four. Right? Okay, now here's the problem with how we did this. Nobody wants to do all this drawing. Right? So there's a little trick to this. Imagine that. Are you ready? You can take 1 times 3, so you can take your whole number times the denominator. What's that? 1 times 3. 3. three. And add one more. Four. And didn't Bentley say it would be 4 thirds? A lot of you did. Okay, so we're going to keep practicing this strategy as we go. Did some of you already know it? Okay, so when I write this problem, I want you to just watch me for a minute, okay? Instead of writing one and one-third, I'm going to put four-thirds as my very first fraction. Okay? 
All right, go ahead and write it. And did we already decide the common denominator? Six. Right. Okay, see if you can finish this problem. Remember, you're subtracting. Okay, see if I did it right. Yeah. Did you get five, six? Yeah. And I don't know if you remember this. It was probably maybe even three weeks ago because we just had spring break. But um, Mrs. Lowry had mentioned that most of the time when your numerator and denominator are one away from each other, you probably don't need to simplify it. Okay? So you're going to see a lot of those today. What was the only thing that was different about this from what we're used to? We had to change our mixed number to what's this called? Improper fraction. If you can't remember, it's up here on the poster. And why do we have to do that? Because you can't subtract one third from one half. One third is smaller than one half. And don't we usually have to have the largest number in front when we subtract? Okay, let's do the next one. So one-fifth minus one-third, I can't do it, can I? No. no. Okay, so get your equal signs on here. And I need someone to raise their hand and tell me if they remember my little strategy for figuring out what my improper fraction is going to be. Well, do you know what the improper fraction is? She says it's six-fifths, is that right? Yes. So... 1 times 5 plus 1 is Lily, right? Okay. So you're going to subtract these, but instead of writing 1 and 1 fifth, you're going to write 6 fifths. Common denominator for 5 and 3 as a def. What's my common denominator? For 5 and 3. What's 5 times 3? Okay, so that's my common denominator. Okay, I'm going to pull sticks here. So, Janae... What should I multiply by right here? Three. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, three. Mm-hmm. And... Lily, what should I multiply by right here? Um, five. Okay. So six times three, and one times five. Uh, Kira, what is 18 minus five? Thirteen. So did you get thirteen fifteenths for your answer? Okay, let's go to the next one. Anybody? Everyone doing okay? Okay. Slade, that stool, would metal work better? Because you've had it at several heights so far. Find one that works and leave it there. Okay. So, Keisler, here's my question. Can I do one half minus two thirds? No, because one half is a little less than two thirds, isn't it? Yep. So now I've got to change this one and a half to an improper fraction. What do you think it's going to be, Keisler? Um. What's one half? Mm -hmm. Yep, three halves. You got it. Okay. Boys and girls, you think you can do this problem on your own? Yes. All right, give it a try. You can check yours with mine when it when it's done. Okay, so did you get five sixths? Yeah. 
All right. How's this one different? Um, three fourths is still less than four fifths, so I'm going to have to put the one in there. How's it different? It's, it's not an answer. Oh, no, it's, not a unit fraction. it's not a unit fraction. I'm not starting with the unit fraction right here. I like your vocabulary, Kinley. But I'm still going to use the same strategy. So what's 1 times 4? Four? 4 plus 3. 7 fourths. And remember, your denominator will not change when you use that strategy. Okay, let's get this set up and see if we can do it. Everything else is still the same. So take a look at this. Did I subtract correctly? 35 minus 16? Yeah. Okay, let's double check. So that's more on the floor go next door, right? Okay, so 1920s. Do we have one more problem? Yes. Yeah. Why don't you do it from start to finish without me? Sound good? Yep. Okay, you're going to have to change that mixed number to an improper fraction. All right. So 13 times 2, who knows what that is? Go ahead, Bentley. 26. So 26 minus 9. 15. You sure? Yeah. I thought it was 17, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay. 17, 18. Okay, do you have any questions on this? It's exactly the same as we did before except for the improper fraction. We already subtracted before spring break. You just forgot. Okay? All right, good job today.